It's not often we have to worry about earthquakes here in the Mid-South, but today emergency crews teamed up to prepare for the worst. While school's out, see how one theater's taking back our neighborhoods. Members here claim that when they look into the light, they see God's face. The question is, is it real or is it just a reflection? At just five feet, nine inches, Hoffauer isn't expecting to be a big home run hitter. In fact, he hit just seven in double A. I'm Lauren Squire. See how one mother's coping as she plans two of her daughter's funerals after Saturday's tragic events here in Selmer. Hundreds of kids come to the zoo here in Memphis each day, but today one child had a special surprise. It may be hot outside, but the coolest place to work in town is right here in this cooler. Week one of practice is in the books for the Ole Miss Rebels. And while it seems the quarterback position has been settled, Coach Ed Ordron made it clear that is not the case. Our quarterback position is still open. Okay. Um, Seth Adams, Mike Herrick, Brent Schaefer, Billy Tapp, and obviously Jevin Snead cannot play. They are all competing out there. While Seth Adams seems the obvious guy for the job, the senior from Holly Springs says he likes the competition. I want to be the starter, so uh, that's how I approach each day. But I still know that uh, i got to compete and work hard and uh, don't let my guard down. While the offense is battling for positions, it's the defense that has Coach O excited. You can already see a change in our defense. You can know you guys been in practice today. We're sacking the quarterback, blitzing left and right. We're going to surprise a lot of people. I mean, we got Marcus Tillman, Greg Hardy coming back, two freshmen all America. The Rebels have another scrimmage on Wednesday. Meet the Rebels Day is on Saturday. In Oxford, Lauren Squires, Action News 5 Sports. He's the story of the season in the baseball world. Going from washed up, one time pitching phenomenon in the majors at age 20 to making the majors a second time as an outfielder. Yes, Rick Ankeel is on the verge of doing something seemingly impossible. Uh, I, I think the, the homers have come a little faster than I expected, and, um, but obviously a good surprise. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm feeling good about the way things are going, just hopefully, hopefully uh, to keep progressing. Ah, home runs. A Pacific Coast leading 26. That's along with a 271 average and his cannon of a left arm. For him, it's not if, but when will he return to the Cardinals. You know, obviously I'm hoping for a call up in September or anytime sooner, but um, you know, for me it's just about coming here and playing day in and day out and just trying to get better at everything that I'm doing every day. Now that Ankeel has reinvented himself as a home run hitting center field, he's a lot more selective about who he chooses to talk to. In fact, a couple of weeks ago ESPN came in town wanting an interview, and he turned them down. Focus on the season, you know, all that just seems like a distraction at this time. And, you know, I'm just another minor league guy having a, having a decent season. So uh, for me, you know, at this time, you know, I just want to come out here and focus on playing, not really worry about so much outside stuff. It's that exact mindset that's gotten him through the horror of a failed career as a pitcher and back on the brink in the big league. Redbirds manager Kevin Maloney says Ankiel is by far one of the best athletes he's ever seen. Seven years old, they're throwing rocks and spray painting. Ten years old, they're in a game, all because they have nothing to do. But there's no time for that here. <laughs> At Hadaloo Theater in Memphis. That's because over two dozen children have invaded the theater as members of Camp Awareness. And we're going to look forward to you making a statement in your life. It's an outreach program that teaches children the ins and outs of theater and much more. Today, they're learning about improvisation. But there's more to this idea than the ear can hear. <laughs> Theater founder Akun Dayum Bendela says it's all about being exposed to culture. Everything that we say is beyond their five block radius, we try to expose them to. And a five block radius, we say, is um, church, school, and home. <laughs> they took yoga at the Y. They went swimming. Many of the children went to the Red Birds game for the first time. They had never experienced that. So it's about acculturation. It's all in an effort to open their eyes. Give me a story! And ears. To the things they can do with their lives if they just put their mind to it. All the way from improv on stage to improving in life. Camp Awareness is teaching these kids that there is more to life than drama. It all started one Friday night at this church on 6th and Looney. Uh, I was preaching on 
uh, God knows where we are. And, uh, and all of a sudden there was a big bang, a big bang hit the church. With that, all the alarms in the neighborhood started going off, including the church. But the lights on the inside, they went to solid gold. That's when Reginald Laurie's daughter saw this, the face of God on the ceiling. But there's a catch. You can't see it with the naked eye. She just took her camera and she took the picture. And when she took the picture, that's when the image came through. Members here claim that when they look into the light, they see God's face. The question is, is it real or is it just a reflection? I mean, it really speaks for itself because you know it's not from here because you've never seen anything on earth that looks like that. As for why you can't see the face without a camera, that may be the biggest mystery of all. I don't, I don't understand why we can't see it with the natural eye. It's, it's a spirit, and, I, and I, you just you can't see it. Church members say whether you see it or not, this image clearly reflects their faith. I believe that this is the face of God appearing to man. It's hot, and everyone's looking for a place to cool off for a while. But dressing like this doesn't make sense. Unless you're George Epson, a freezer man at the Kilke Brothers Ice Cream Company. Oh, it feels good inside freezer. It's freezing, that's for sure. Set at minus 20 degrees, this place houses hundreds of gallons of ice cream, all waiting to be loaded onto a truck and delivered around the Mid-South. With extreme temperatures like these, it's important that Epson wears the proper clothing for the job. Oh, my boy, I'm my freezer suit right here. Keep me warm. It keep me real warm. I got my hat, my arm hat, keep my pay warm. It's conditions like this that make it just as dangerous as being outside in the heat. But that doesn't stop workers. They say they can stay in these freezers for up to two hours before they get cold. But when asked if they'd rather be outside in the heat of the summer, the answer was simple. Oh, no, we're going to freeze. Yeah, it's too hot out here now. It's too hot. 